Hey, man. You know what? Let's call these motherfuckers up right the fuck now and uh, see what the fuck is going on. Uh, Engrave fucking Huffer fucking world, man. What the fuck, dude? Holy shit. Grave Huffer. What's up? Dudes, what the fuck is going on, man? You guys are live right now on the Zach Moonshine Show. What the fuck? How's it going, man? Hey, how's everyone doing? Dude, man. What? Dude, that new fucking track is fucking bad fucking ass, man. What the fuck, man? What the fuck are you guys smoking? What are you, <laughs> what are you, what are you guys huffing? <laughs> right? <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks, man. We appreciate that. The, the good feedback, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Dude, man. Fuck yeah, man. All right, man. So, uh, well, I've talked to you guys before, done an interview before, but uh, some of the people listening out there right now may have not fucking heard that shit before. So, I'm going to go through some of the fucking, uh, some of the similar questions, man. Fucking, uh, but I mean, what what the fuck is going on right now in the world of Grave Huffer, man? What are you guys doing? right now um we just signed with block space records which a lot of people know about um and that's the label that has skin drone and Mockerdon and um several cool other bands that i can't think of right now oh tiwanaku which holy shit they're yeah. bad they are badass like yeah uh one of their guitar player michael estes is my wife's second cousin. No he's shit. From Jop- yeah, he's from Joplin. Small world. Man, that's fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, isn't it? It's just not. But, um, but yeah, we're, we're blunt-faced and, um, they signed us to put out our rec, our, your, the, if I could talk, the Your Fault album that we released earlier this year. They're gonna put that out on vinyl. And the song you guys just heard is one of the vinyl exclusive uh, bonus tracks. And it's called Your Fault. So it's like, I guess, the title track. And then we got another song that's completely, almost completely written. Uh, lyrics are written. Music's written. We just got to get the drum parts down. And then we'll record it and then do what everybody thinks of that. So, uh, And then... I got some endorsements here recently. Uh, Killer V Guitars is making me a custom flying V. And, um, Hell yeah. Yeah, dude. And then I got a Von York string endorsement, uh, Sinister Guitar Fix, and a Spectre, Spectre Flex cable. So, things are looking up, dude. It's, it's really, things are going real good. Do you have anything to add to that, Mike? Or? Uh, we're actually, we're actually also changing some of the rhythm section around. Right now, we have uh, our original drummer, Larry. He's, he works so much that we can't play shows. And so we have an old friend from back in the day who's been in the death metal scene since the early 90s. And uh, he's going to come in, and he's going to start doing the, drum tra- doing the drums, and he's going to play uh, the other new song that we're going to do. He's going to play on that, and we'll just, that'll be on the album, too. Yeah, so some interesting times ahead, for sure. Fucking badass, dude. Yeah, I was just telling everybody earlier at, uh, at the beginning of the show, man, how cool it was that you guys are fucking putting out these extra tracks on the vinyl version of the album and how it, you know, gives people an extra fucking reason to fucking get the fucking vinyl. Although, I had to fucking add, man, fucking hey, man, there's no... You didn't have to do that shit. I'm just saying... <laughs> You didn't have to do that shit. All you had to do was say, man, we're putting out a fucking vinyl fucking version. First day buyer, motherfucker. But the fact that you guys are putting extra songs on there, that's really fucking cool, man. Like, that's, that you know, that's that gives, I mean, what the fuck, dude? That's fucking cool. Like, why the fuck isn't everybody doing shit like that, you know? Right, yeah, man. I agree. I totally yeah, agree. That's what we'd want from, like, bands we listen to, you know? Like, yeah. You buy the record and it's like a punk cut rare cover that they do or something, you know? Yeah, something extra, you know? I mean, it's just kind of a cool, uh, I mean, I, I think that the, the cool thing about these songs is that it's like, huh, it's, it's almost like they're for a 
logical progression from what the previous stuff was, but damn, it's been like almost two years since we wrote that shit. And so this is like even, I don't know, to me it's way different, but you know, everybody else might not think so, but we've lived with those other songs for so long that it's, it's exciting for us to do these extra tracks. So, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's still grave buffer in my opinion, listening to it, but, it definitely has like a different uh it's like the next fucking level it's sort of like when pantera did far beyond driven it was the same sort of thing as vulgar display of power but it was like a whole nother fucking level of it you know what i mean yeah yeah it's I, 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 yeah, yeah the, newer song, the newer song's a little bit more difficult like we were, we were writing them and usually i just pick up my bass i'm like i'm gonna get warmed up and i'll play play through some of the songs but now I have to, like, get warmed up before I even try to play through these new ones because it's, like, so much more technical and real far reaches and stuff. Yeah, and we're, we're challenging ourselves even more. <laughs> we're getting too old for this shit. I don't know why we're doing it. <laughs> oh, hell no, man. You guys are doing fucking great, dude. Fucking shit sounds great, man. Thanks, man. man. Man, tell me about the the Blunt Face Records fucking hookup, man. How did you guys, how, how did that all fucking come together and shit? Well, um, it was kind of like the deal with the solo. I just point blank asked. <laughs> and um, there was, a, I guess, a press release that they put out that, that said Hanyo was going to be the new CEO. Mm-hmm. Well, I read the press release and they mentioned stuff. They mentioned something about doing vinyl. So I just point blank asked Hanyo. I said, man... What would you think about um, doing a grave up for vinyl? And he goes, dude, I can't believe you just asked me that. You were the first band we thought of. So he was. We were already on his radar, which is fucking cool. And so that's that's kind of how it came about. We just mutually met in the middle, I guess you could say. So um, when Hanyo took over. He had his sights set on us for this record, so that's pretty much how that came about. Hell yeah, man. Hanyo's fucking cool as fuck, too, man. Fucking, uh... Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. The very driven dude, too. And he's got his shit together. Very much, man. Very much. He is fucking very much down to fucking business, dude. Like, no yeah. fucking around. That's exactly right. Hell yeah, dude. So... Uh for for uh for people out there who have not heard the fucking uh our pre- previous interviews and stuff like that man how how long have you guys been uh been doing this and how exactly did the band get started well <clears throat> we've been doing it as well we started out in 2008 under another name and it was we were called Crom and the three of us were actually in another band called Initial Bad Nation and it's more like punk and punk metal kind of crust tub. Yeah, it's like, um, I mean, it's not real far from what we're doing now, but, uh, so we've been playing together off and on since the late 90s, so the chemistry's there. And so 2008, we did the Crom record, and then we changed the name in 2012 to Grave Buffer. We were initially going to put out an EP, and um, the guy at the label, Stan, he said, well, why don't you just do the Crom album with the EP and just make it your reintroduce those songs from the Crom album as Grave Huffer since you changed the name? And so we did that, and we played shows off and on for I don't know how long, well, seven or eight years, and then we've been on a little bit of a hiatus since the, the whole drummer thing. But like Mike was saying earlier, that's hopefully going to change very soon. Actually, I had a, con- I had a, I had a uh, conversation with him today, and he's been learning the songs, and um, he said he's just itching to go. So probably within the next week or two, we're going to start jamming with the new drummer. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I'm so excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't played a show. We haven't played like, a show. So that's like fucking therapy. You know right. I mean? Like Yeah. And uh, this drummer, he's a bad, he's a badass man. Oh yeah, I can't wait to play. It's gonna be a little bit different style because Larry's more like of a punk background, and this guy's more like death metal. You know? Yeah, I have a little bit more double kick 
and it, but they'll still, I don't know, I might change the sound a little bit, but mm-hmm. I'm excited. You know? Yeah. Well, it, 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 this will be a little bit different vibe, I think. It's, but it, it's still going to sound like Grey Pepper, I think, but just with a little bit different approach, I guess. Hell yeah, man. Got some questions coming in from the chat room, dude. We got uh, Secret Weapon in here. He wants to know who is the craziest off the fucking wall personality in the band, and he needs a, he needs a, he needs a story too. He says our, our singer James. He's kind of like a muppet, like a human muppet. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, he's like he is. Man. He he wrote knuckle like on his fucking knuckle, dude. He tattooed knuckle. On his knuckles. On his knuckles. <laughs> nice. We called him forever and it started pissing him off. <laughs> Captain Knuckles. He wants up to Knuckles. <laughs> but yeah, he's, uh, and he said some fucked up jokes that shows. And like, I thought, one of them was like, what's red and crawls up your leg? It's a, a, a homesick abortion. <laughs> I mean, he, he says some pretty jacked up shit at shows. And he, uh, it's a type where like, one or two people laugh, and the rest of the people just kind of stare at you like, what the fuck? <laughs> Dude, that's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got a pretty warped sense of humor, but, uh, and some of it comes out in the, the lyrics, and then, you know, some of it's like, whoa, did yeah. he write that? You know, like, hey, sometimes I don't, I'm like, he didn't write that. He didn't write that, he's but I've been smart. Sometimes. Yeah, he is. He's pretty well read, man. So, but yeah, he's definitely the craziest. Right on. Got another question from the chat room. Megan wants to know, what do you look for in a hot lady like me? <laughs> uh, well, we're all uh, married men, I guess. So my my wife has long, like she's a brunette. So I guess I like brunettes. Um, Sorry, she, Megan. They're all taken. Yeah, we're all. <laughs> He's very shapely. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you know, but yeah, we have four kids. If that tells you anything, right on. She also wants to know what are your favorite horror movies. Oh shit, that's a that's a long list right there. Uh, I mean, of course, the classic Chainsaw. Everybody, that's a mental mind fuck right there. Fuck yeah. That's like weird, you know, like Eraserhead. Uh, yeah, David Lynch. Yeah, yeah, David Lynch is a shit. Uh, what else? Uh, Exorc- the Exorcist for me. Hell yeah. I like a lot of old Italian, you know, like uh, Dolce stuff, you know. Like anything, even like cheesy horror movies, I love that shit. My mom used to take us to the drive-in and the movies all the time. We saw all kinds of fucked up. Like, I saw The Exorcist when I was like, See, I did too. The drive-in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that shit. The fuck. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was, my parents took me. Yeah, I was scared to go to bed too. I was my like, dad, like my dad, he's like, here, I turn the light off. He's like, don't let your bed start shaking. And he fucking turned the light off. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah, parents, man. Good, man. That old shit fucking rules, dude. Fucking what the fuck, oh, yeah. man. Right on. Uh, got another question from the chat room. Uh, Thunderous, she wants to know, where'd you get the tune Shut Shut Up and Skate from? Oh, that, uh, that was something that, like, the idea I came up with. I just had an idea of, like, the, like, I'm an old school skater, and so I just, like, told James, like, James never skated or anything, but I was like, dude, I wrote this song, and I was like, I don't think it really fits the band. And so I played, we played through it, and everybody else liked it, and I was like, man, eh, this doesn't sound like Grave Upper. So I was, like, fighting to get it off of the playlist, you know? I was like, I don't think it really fits this. And like, no, 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 man, we'll keep it, we'll keep it. So, like, James writes the lyrics about a skateboarder that, like, wakes up and gets high, goes to 7-Eleven and gets a slushy, you know, and gets <laughs> a magazine or whatever, and goes skating for the rest of the day. And he's like, all right, and he did a good job being yeah. I mean, a skater. The like, lyrics are pretty cool. And the song is a little different, and that's why we were pushing for it, so, you know. And like it's uh, Shut Up and Skate is an old Thorlac uh, motto, so, you know, we kind of went with that uh, old school shit, right? Yeah, we're old skaters from the 80s. Well, me and Mike are old skaters from the 80s, so. Oh, Mike's yeah. still, if I don't. I still skate, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm 47, I'm still rolling, man. <laughs> <laughs> right 
Fuck yeah, dude. She wants you to know that, that uh, her and Mike are also wearing your their Grave Huffer fucking sweatshirts right now. Oh, nice. Awesome. Thank awesome. you. We're in fucking sweatshirts, man. What the fuck? <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude yeah. man. Up in New York, it is a little cooler. Is it? I think so. It must be, man. It's pretty cool down here. Yeah, it's only like in the 60s. Either that or they're a fucking die fucking hard, dude. Like, they... <laughs> yeah, probably a little bit of <laughs> Yeah, it is. Secret Weapon also wants to know, uh, who taps the most groupies? Dude, these guys are married, man. What the fuck? Come yeah, on. that last time, yes. Yeah, every time, dude. Yeah, I said it. Every band, dude. Every band. Uh, I don't... So, I, well, I mean, until... They... We're all taken, but at, at a time, I'd say it was our singer, Jay. Yeah, he's kind of a man whore. Or yeah, he used, to be. He, used to, he used to get around a little bit. So I would say James, for sure. Those kind of drills like always scared me, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The girls would come up and they're like, hey, and you're like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> like, who they do this to last night? Right? <laughs> right? I remember one time we played, and uh, Gene... Uh, this, this one girl had a black eye, and the other girl just looked beat the fuck up. They're both. So they said, "You think I have girlfriends?" We're like, "We all do, except for Gene." And he went out and made out with the girl with the black eye, man. Gene. Yeah. I go, "Gene, don't you like how she got that black eye?" <laughs> what the fuck, man? Damn. Nice. <laughs> uh, Secret Weapon also wants to know: Have you ever had any technical disasters while live on stage? Mm. Like disasters. Uh, um, I don't know. Like we're pretty good at covering. Like if it breaks a string, you just jump up to the next string, and yeah, I can't really think of anything. Like no uh, pedals explode. No, I know we <laughs> we we played a show in Tulsa. We were open for Immolation and Vader, <laughs> and. um my pedal board started freaking out, and my guitar sounded like really weird, like it was half plugged in or something. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? And there was my wah pedal, like the, the cord wasn't plugged in for the, uh, to power it, the power cord. Mm -hmm. So I'm like trying to plug it in and with my foot, and it was like, <laughs> it sounded, it kind of sounded cool. <laughs> but everybody's probably like, man, that tone's wicked, but, you know. That's the only thing I can think of off the top of my head. Our, our drummer did used to have this kind of shitty drum set, and sometimes we'd have to pause for a little longer than we like to, to for him to, like, fix something. Yeah, he'd have, like, five strips. He had five strips on his snare stand to hold the thing up, you know. But one time, like, <laughs> one time we were playing a show, he, he took forever to set up, and usually... Like, we try to set up as fast as we can and tear down as fast as we can just so the sound man doesn't get pissed. Right. Or the other fans are like, okay, cool, these guys are getting the hell out of the way. Right. And uh, Larry, he shows up, and it's like this underground club here in town, and he's taking forever to set up. And he kept moving his drums. Oh, I remember that. The stage was real deep, and he moved up, but he almost pushed us off the stage. I remember that. I was like, what the hell is going on, man? Like, and... After the show, he comes up, he's like, I'm never doing that again. I'm like, what? He's like, I got a whole bunch of mushrooms, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a mess. Yeah. Well, he was like, yeah. Yeah. playing Grave Huffer song. He's like, I couldn't catch my breath. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I, <laughs> I like, forgot about it. Like, the walls are closing in on me. That's why I kept scooting my drums forward. And like, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I forgot. He, yeah, he was on mushrooms on the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm, That's I'm fucking sorry. crazy, man. I can't imagine fucking doing that shit on mushrooms, dude. Hey, it looks like running sprints, you know what I mean? Like, we, we count off when we race to the end. Yeah. So every song's like, all I have to do, beating the crap out of everything. He's like, I couldn't catch my breath. I thought I was going to fall over dead. No, I'm so scared. <laughs> He's like, I'm never doing that again. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty funny. That was a good show, though. We hauled balls. I remember that. Hell yeah, man. Fucking, uh, <laughs> let's see here. Larry Cook wants to know, what are your favorite restaurants to eat at? <laughs> favorite restaurant. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like Thai food. Yeah, I mean, I just ate at one of my favorite Mexican places tonight. Which, Maria. Maria. 
Maria's. Yeah, you like Maria's. That place is good. There's a place here called Thai Time. Have you had Thai Time? Yeah, yeah. Thai Time. Fucking up. Oh, oh my can't read, dude. That Thai food is shit. I like, I like Thai Time, though. Yeah? Yeah, Canary's pretty good. Thai Time shit. I think I like Thai Time better. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Absolutely. Yeah. That's one thing, man. This town has a shitload of restaurants. Oh, my God, dude. Joplin's all about food. I mean, it's like... You, it takes you all year. It takes take you more than a year to eat at every place. No? Yeah. No kidding. I mean, you can eat somewhere every day. You can eat somewhere new every fucking day for a year, I swear to God. Secret Weapon also wants to know uh, any visits to local jails while on tour. No. No, but uh, we're, we're on tour... And we got, ended up getting stuck in uh, Arizona with Toxic Narcotic. I don't know if you guys know who they are, but we went to the supermarket, and, like, we were walking around, and one of those guys was stealing, he had a 40, he had a, those old-style uh, Levi's jean jackets with the big pockets on the inside, you know? And he, like, had a, he was stealing a 40 of beer and a block of cheese. <laughs> and he got caught. <laughs> so he went to jail, man. He had, like, weed on him, like, stinky stinky green weed and they like went in the jail with it and came out with it but I remember when he came back to the house he's like nobody say a fucking word <laughs> somebody's like beer and cheese dude <laughs> he was like fuck off <laughs> he was pissed man I didn't remember not, it was a, I don't think you were on that tour but we in the initial detonation days we went to play a show in Toronto in Canada and uh, we went across the border through Canada no problem like around Niagara Falls, I think. And we came back through, uh, around Detroit. And oh my God, they stopped us. The, the customs, like the border patrol to come into America stopped us. We were there for hours. They made us take everything out of our trailer. They searched like all our equipment cases and guitar cases and was shining flashlights in the speaker cabinets and stuff. And we were there for hours. It was kind of trippy. But, I mean, we weren't, you know, we didn't have anything to be nervous about, but, you know, it was still kind of, like, amazing that we got into Canada, no big fucking deal, but then we came back in America, it was like, what the fuck, you know? So, that was in the days before. Oh, well, yeah, this was, like, in 1999. So, yeah, that was kind of a, kind mm-hmm. of a reality check, I guess. Hell oh, yeah, man. Go, going back to your beginnings, dude, fucking, what would you say, uh, what, what are some of the bands that fucking influenced you the most to do what you do? Well, um, for me, I was like, I remember, like, my parents got me a Kiss album, I had Kiss Alive 2, and I was like, oh my god, this is badass, you know, and Gene Simmons with the blood coming out of his mouth and breathing fire, and, you know, yeah. it's just a larger than life kind of thing. And then, I have no clue, my dad was into Judas Priest, and I'm, like, looking at Unleashed in the East, the live album, and I'm, like, looking at it, and K.K. Downing's got the Flying V, and I was like, yep, that's what I want to do. Fuck yeah. You know? And, um, today's Rob Hopper's 66th birthday. No shit. Yeah. 60 fucking uh, 6, man. Yeah, dude. He's on Route 66 now. (laughs) But... But yeah, I like a lot of like that old seventies rock and metal, you know, the Black Sabbath, like Tony Iommi. He's probably one of the biggest influences on my rhythm playing him and like James Hetfield and um <clears throat> as far as like the, the thrashy kind of sound and then as far as like the punk vibe. Oh, I like, you know, Johnny Ramone because he he, he down picks everything. Um, so yeah. You know, I, I, and then, I, you know, I like the death metal stuff, too, like Morbid Angel. Um, they're probably one of my all-time favorites. Um, so, and then I like kind of the noisy stuff, like Godflesh, stuff like that, too. Just, uh, I could go on forever, but those are some big ones. What about you, Mike? Yeah, uh, I have to say, like, early influence would be Cliff Burton. You know, when I first started out, like, Cliff Burton was a bomb, you know? Fuck yeah, dude. Uh, uh, Mike Watt from the Minutemen. Like, he has a huge influence on me still today. I'll sit and try to play Minutemen songs. And, but then I got turned on to a friend of mine giving me the Great First Suicide Call Tennessee's album. And that just opened my eyes to, like, I was like, man, there's a whole other world out there. And I just dived in, and I found, like, I uh, discovered Mod 47. And that was, like, one of the first bands where I was like, it sounds like somebody 
Suicidal tendencies? No, Mach 47. Like, uh, it's like Swedish uh, beat stuff. That's crazy fast. And to me, it sounds like there's a band playing and someone pushed them down the stairs, but they're all still playing their instruments. Not falling down the stairs. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like chaos. And it's just so crazy. That I, I guess that's why I like it. It's just so, so fast and chaotic. You know? But they still somehow manage to keep it together. Yeah, it's like someone flying a plane and they're like breaking the third speaker and it's fucking flying apart, but they're still flying it. You know, they're like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> Strip of the bar. Right. Hell we yeah. try, try for that. Hell yeah, man. Well, dude, fucking, uh, what, you guys are fucking like band of the month for the second fucking time, dude. What the fuck is up with that shit, man? What the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, that was pretty cool, man. I gotta admit. We have to thank everybody for that, too. Yeah, we had like 369 or 70 votes. I was like, holy shit. That's really. It's humbling. It really is. It's like, holy crap, man. Man, it's a testament, dude, right there, dude. I'm telling you what, man. You guys fucking work hard, like, with fucking... I see what you're doing all the time, fucking just promoting the fucking shit out of what you do, man. And that's what it's all about, like, fucking... You guys do it right. There's a lot of bands out there that could fucking definitely learn a thing or two from you guys. Uh, if I don't mind saying so myself, but I mean, for sure, man, fucking like, uh, what, what's your take on that though? Like, like, uh, I mean, how do you feel about that as far as like the internet promotion and stuff like that? I think it's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a tool. Yeah, it's a tool. Exactly. Well, that's funny. I was going to say that. It's a tool. Why not use it? You know, and it takes work. I mean, and if you're not going to work, then why are you doing it? You know, <clears throat> I mean, it, I, just stay in your fucking bedroom and, practice and write songs if you're not going to put it out there for other people to, sh you know, share it with other people, you know? <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that's like the coolest feeling is like, right. putting all this work into something and pe other people get it. And right. They like it. So you're like, yeah, this is awesome. You know, like, right. you get it too, you know? Right. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's the whole thing with art, you know? I mean, that's one of the big, the whole point of it is to, you know, create and share, you know? And so, that's like what we just, we try our best to do that. So, and then when we get support, we like to support the people that are supporting us, you know, scratching each other's back. You know, I mean, I personally think fans need to do a lot more of that. And especially the underground, I just think that it would function so much more smoothly and the networking would be, there's opportunities out there, you know? I mean, why not use them? So, but at, at the same time, we still like to keep it old school, too. You know, we still print flyers for shows and hang them up around town and stuff like that. So, um, and that that method still is tried and true and still works better, really. So, but, you know, we still do the, the internet thing for that, too. So, we, we try to do a little bit of the uh, best of both worlds approach. What? Well, like... Uh, if someone asks us advice, we always like, we don't feed them a line of shit because we want to see them get better and, you know, like we're not out to like say, oh, we want to keep these guys below us. Right. You know, we want to see them the next, the next crop to come up better than us. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Fucking, I mean, yeah, I was watching. I was watching a fucking uh, documentary not long ago about fucking uh, the grunge scene in fucking Seattle and shit about fucking all those bands. And something somebody fucking said on there made me think a little bit about that. They were talking about the fact that all those bands back then, like Soundgarden, Nirvana, and fucking Pearl Jam, and all of them, like they all helped each other. They didn't fucking like try to fucking fight with each other. Like they didn't try to outdo each other. They tried to help each other. Right. You know, it's like they had like this little network where they were all friends and they were family and they just like they totally fucking pushed each other to fucking go up go up higher and they were saying you know like when they went to other fucking uh cities and stuff like they noticed it was totally different you know like other 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 scenes were like you know what the fuck man we don't do that shit here like we're like you know we're fucking uh fighting for fucking fucking bones you know here man and it's like you know well, it's, it's like the scene here used to be like that. It used to be, like, you'd go to a punk show, and there'd be, like, an alternative band, a blues band, and a couple punk bands. Yeah. And 
and everybody, you know, just look out of the crowd, you see like jocks, uh, punk kids, rave kids, oh, like yeah. uh, goth kids. Yeah, you know, and everybody would dance and not give a fuck about. Oh, I'm, I'm not. I don't look cool. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. There'd be people like doing the eighties. They're like Grateful Dead looking like swinging around right. in the middle of the fucking pit. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what's that dude doing? They're like, he's having a good time. Yeah. yeah it didn't matter. Yeah. But it seems like it's totally changed. It's not like that anymore. Yeah. It's like everything's so like compartmentalized. You know what I mean? It's like, this belongs here. This belongs here. This belongs here. You know? And it's like, there's like these little, everything's got to have their own little niche or something. I don't know. I just don't get that, you know, we come from a different time, and everybody wants to be like, we are deathcore, we're metalcore, and then that's all they do, and and then our fans do the kung fu windmill dance, you know, or whatever, and it's, you know, I'm not talking shit on that necessarily, I'm not really into it, well, but back in the day, you'd got your ass kicked, right, I mean, we played, a, we opened for this band Norma Jean, and they were doing that when we were playing, and it was the it was weird, you know, I mean, but, you know, whatever you're into, you're having fun, that's cool. But I don't, I don't like this, like, crowd killing and shit that I, I've been seeing lately, like, all these guys will come and just, just, like, beat the shit out of people, and so that's not cool, you know? It used to be, like, you get in a pit and you, you mosh and somebody falls down and you help them up, and... You don't see that as much anymore, so I don't know. We wave. Did we go off on a tangent? Or what? I don't know. <laughs> I forgot the question. I forgot the question now. <laughs> uh, about the scene and the clique. Like, yeah. Helping each other. Right. Yeah. Fuck so, yeah, <laughs> man. Well, uh, yeah, we, and, and another well, thing, like, about the online promotion and shit like that, like, you know, at the core of it, you got to have good fucking sounding music, too, you know? Like, it can't just yeah. be just that, the, you know, it's not just the fact that you guys are fucking, like, promoting the shit out of it and using every single avenue you can at the core of it you do have good fucking sounding music too but like uh, there's other bands out there too that do have good sounding music but they don't fucking utilize those tools and they just fucking they just get swallowed up whole and yeah. I mean, in radio i'll tell you right now dude i get sent so much fucking shit dude it's unbelievable right. and sometimes they'll fucking send me emails you know where like it's just the fucking song just an MP3, no fucking uh, title, no fucking, no links to anything. I'm like, what the fuck do you want me to do with this? Like, <laughs> like yeah, bro, you, there's, 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 there's nothing. Game, right? like, what the fuck? I'm going to do this game. I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, I'm like, you know, come on, man. Fucking, you know, at least, at least try a little bit harder, man. Fucking give me All something, right. man. Fuck. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, I mean, back in the day, we used to make cassettes. And, like, we, if we went to, like, a big punk show, like, I remember we went and saw Biohazard, like, before they even got signed to a label. And, like, me and my friend, we were both in a band. We both had tapes. And we were throwing them on the stage, you know? And after a couple of times, the guitar player picked it up. He's like, hey, man, we already got one of these. And he, like, throws it back out. <laughs> but every band we go to see, we're trying to throw tapes on the stage. Like, we're trying everything. Right. To get our shit heard, you know? Yep. And you put all your information on the tape, yeah, you know, in the sleeve, mailing address, mailing address, yeah. all the contact info. Yeah. And, I mean, that's the way they did it back then. Why not keep doing that? Keep the, the, the tried and true ideas and apply them to the new ways of, of communicating. Yeah, I, I try to tell people, I'm like, you know, you guys got to do that shit because fucking, you know, like, we're getting hammered every day with fucking... Like, so many fucking different bands coming at us all the time, you know. And, right. uh, you know, you know, a lot of us that are in the, you know, promoting and fucking doing internet radio and stuff like that, we're not going to fucking just... A lot of us don't have the time to just fucking, like, look up all that information for you, you know. Like, if you don't fucking... Right, I mean, shouldn't it, have... I mean... Yeah, they should make it as easy as possible. Right. For you to find out what they're about. Yeah. And where they're where they can be found and all that, you know. I mean, why would you not want to do that? That's just baffling. I have no idea, dude. It, it fucking, it makes me laugh, dude, mostly. You know, I'm oh. just, I'm like, fuck, what the fuck? I'm like, hey, look at this. You got to see. Yeah, <laughs> There's some unknown band from Parts Unknown. <laughs> Dilly. I don't know the fucking song. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Hell, 
may be incredible, but like you gotta put you gotta do more than just record music and write music. I mean, there's other parts to it, man. If you want to be heard, you gotta do the other stuff too. Hell yeah, man. Well, as far as uh, you you guys are finally getting fucking released on fucking vinyl, dude, how does that fucking feel, man? Because I know I've talked to you guys before about this shit. I mean, we've been talking about that for a long fucking time, dude. Fucking, it's yeah. finally going to happen, dude. What the fuck? Right. How do you feel about yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, that's been our goal since, pretty much since we've been Grave Huffer, for sure. Because when we did the first album, the first CD is Grave Huffer, we initially were going to put it out on a 7-inch, the EP, and then we decided to get against doing that. But when we did this new album, the Your Fault album, we had every intention of doing it on vinyl. Yeah, that was number one. That was the goal. number one goal, yeah. And, and then the, the, the different label picked it up. And we had it set on the shelf for like a year. Yeah. For waiting for these guys to put it out. And then they ended up going under. Right. And so the... the the label kind of set on it for a while. And so it's kind of been stagnant, or not stagnant, but it's kind of just been on the shelf. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cause we, we uh, I think it was like last July or last August when we sent it to this other label, and then the label told us they were going to put it out, and they had already sent it in, and we sent them a layout and all that stuff. Yeah, I remember. And the, the Vinyl Master, yeah, so. I was ready to yeah. buy that shit too, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. This has been a blessing in disguise, though, really, because now we we got the opportunity to do it up with the bonus tracks, and I just, I don't know, man. I'm I'm way more excited about it now. Yeah, the Bloodface guys seem, seem really cool, man. Yeah. They, I like that they do different kinds of, of stuff, you know? Yeah, it's not just, like, Doom or Sludge, you know, that they are just metal. I mean, they do, like, they have, like, different kind of, like, things on their label, you know. Don't fit in a genre. Yeah, they're like, they kind of have some weird stuff. And then they have, like, black metal. Then they have us, and, you know. It's so, I think we fit well with them. Well, yeah. at, the, at the beginning, like, uh, we'd send out stuff for reviews, and people would say, oh, these guys haven't found their sound yet. They don't really know what they want to do. What the fuck? Yeah, we're getting, like, shit because we do so many different styles. But, like, if you think about, like, fucking Black Sabbath, think about all the different styles they cover, or uh, Bad Brains, you know what I mean? Like, Bad Brains will be tearing your ass up with a spass ass punk. Mm -hmm. Then they play some reggae. Yeah. And chill it. Then out for a little bit. Right. Then they're like, okay, we're going to hit fucking the shit's going to hit the fan again. Ah, you know? Yeah. You know what, I, th have I think that's just laziness on the fucking reviewer's part, you know? Like, they... They're like, you know, oh my god, what do I fucking say about this? It's all over the place. It's too many different styles for me to fucking write about. I, I you know. I, yeah, I can see that. I'm, yeah. I'm trained to only write about one fucking thing, and uh, that's it, you know. It, it, that kind of ties in with, like, the, some of the bands anymore. They just want to do one thing, and so I, I gotta, I totally agree with you on that. I think it's cool that you guys do all the different fucking uh, things that you do, man, and, and mix it all together. And, and to be honest with you, it does not sound to me... When I listen to a Grave Huffer album, it sounds like a fucking Grave Huffer album. It doesn't sound like a whole bunch of different bands fucking playing on one... Like it did, I mean, what are they trying to say, man? It doesn't sound like a compilation album. It sounds like a fucking Grave Huffer album, dude. In my right. opinion. Yeah, I agree. And we, we think the same way. We think, you know, we're like... We haven't found our sound. Like I'm 47 years old. I hope I fucking hope I found my sound. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you guys, right? you guys definitely got your sound, man. You guys got that fucking down for sure, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, uh, there's there's no fucking doubt. Like you put on a fucking song by you guys, just like earlier when I played your fault first time I heard it, and immediately I know it's fucking you. You know, yeah, it's got your cool. sound. That's for sure. Right. Hell yeah, dude. Well, I mean, we like to throw new wrinkles in here and there, you know, just to make it fun. Yeah, like the new song, we do Barber Barbershop Quartet. No, no, no. Great Barbershop Got another right. question from the chat room. Uh, Secret Weapon wants to know, who did your original logo for the band? Um, 
this guy named Carl Dahmer, he's the one that did the, the first one. He's getting pretty big now, too. Yeah, Dahmer Art, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Man, he's done stuff for, like, incantation. And he just did municipal waste media. He did the municipal waste t-shirt here a couple months ago. So, yeah, he's really getting big. Uh, but, yeah, he did our, the Blast Music album cover on the logo and everything. And then for the Your Fault one, um, Mike, our, the ba- our bass player, he, he kind of evened it out and cleaned it up because we, we, that's just what we wanted. Yeah, still the basic, basically it's Carl design. I just even some stuff out of it. Yeah, yeah. Put some subliminal messages in there. Yeah, like, you know, the ice cream. Buy 47 copies of our album. <laughs> Fucking A. <laughs> right on, man. Well, I'm about out of question for you guys, dude. Fucking, uh, is there anything else you want to add to let the people know? Um, well, we just buy our record, man. You know, we hope you we hope you guys will uh, are interested enough to, to check out our album when it comes out. It's supposed to be out in January or February of next year. So that that's uh, that's the only other piece of information that I think we've didn't talk about is when it's going to come out. Buy also, the shit out of it, motherfuckers. Yeah. We are going to do a pre-order thing starting here in a couple weeks, I think. I still need to talk to Hanyo about that. But, uh, but yeah, we're going to do a pre-order kind of thing and we'll have, like, you know, different packages and stuff that we'll put together for it. So that'll be starting up really soon. So, and trust me, you, you guys will know about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. As soon as you guys send the link, dude, I'll be posting it all over the fucking place. Oh, yeah, man. We love it. We appreciate all you guys' hard work helping us out. Yeah, you guys have been the number one station to help us out, so we love you guys. Fuck yeah, man. Well, we fucking love you guys, too, man. Fucking Grave Huffer forever, motherfuckers. <laughs> Cheers, man. Well, before <laughs> before I let you guys go, I got to get you to make us uh, another station tag, man. Okay. All right, man, whenever you're ready, say uh, something like, I don't know, say whatever the fuck you want to say, man. Say something like, this is Grave Huffer, and you're listening to the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation Radio or some shit. Okay. This is Richie. This is Mike. We're Grave Huffer. You're listening to the Zach Moonshine Show on Metal Devastation Radio. For Metal Rain's Burrito Supreme. (laughs) Love it. Fuck yeah, uh-huh. dude. All right, man. Well, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to blast that fucking tune once again because one time was not enough, dude. I got to play it again. I'm going to make these motherfuckers go deaf, all right? Uh, thanks, man. All right, man. Thanks a lot for taking the time, dudes, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, man. All right, man. Take it easy. All right, man. Later. Later. There you have it, folks. Grave Huffer live on the motherfucking Zach Moonshine Show. Crank this motherfucking shit up loud as a fucking fuck. I mean, I want you to put your fucking hands on the volume knob and crank it till it fucking breaks. Make it louder than your motherfucking farts. On the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation fucking radio. This is Grave Huffer loud. Loud, loud. The 1960s represented the last burst of the human being before he was extinguished. And that this is the beginning of the rest of the future now. And from now on, there'll simply be all these robots.